welcome to Lately Coffee with Mary. I am Mary and this is my sister-in-law Steffi. She is joining us today. I am so excited that you are here with me. I'm actually here with her because I'm in Colorado at her home. <laughs> we came here for the Christmas and um, we've just been here for three weeks. It's been amazing. But I'm really happy to share her with you because she is like the biggest treasure of a friend that you could ever want. Like I married her husband not knowing her and holy cow was she like the best gift in the world because she just came with him and it's like my best friend I never knew I always wanted like <laughs> and she's full of wisdom and biblical knowledge she is just like depths depths of just godliness and I'm really happy that I get to share her with you because she has been doing something the last four years that is incredible um, God has just walked her through a season that was really difficult and she has been willing to open herself up to the rest of the world through that difficulty to help other people be pulled out of that pit that she was in. And um, it came through her marriage and through something that me and my husband would have never imagined would happen to them because they had just an amazing marriage. Like we've, since the beginning of our marriages have become um, accountability par partners for each other. And I highly recommend that people do this. It was a huge decision that we made before we had kids that we're like, man, we really want someone that we love and trust to mm -hmm. speak into our marriage and that knows us both and wants what's best for both of us. Mm -hmm. And they were the couple that we wanted to do that for us because their marriage was so good. They'd been married a year longer than yes, us, right? Year. Yeah. And so, and we just really admired them and looked up to them. So we're like, yes, we want to be a accountability partners with you. And so throughout the first, like how many years was it? Like eight years. Eight years. We, it was a great avenue for both of us mm -hmm. to call each other when we were having an argument or a fight with our spouse. And rather than running to someone that's just going to stroke our you go and tell us that we're right and that our husband's an idiot or whatever mm -hmm. it was someone that was like actually maybe you should look at yourself like how were you wrong in that scenario and have someone that really wanted what was best for both of us and so we had that for those eight years but she's military mm -hmm. her husband's in the air force so they've moved all over the world or the u.s i guess not yeah, the world not, <laughs> not yet not yet <laughs> hopefully not but um <laughs> they've moved around a lot and during the season that um this particular thing was birth. I'm going to share it with you now because it is awesome. It is called Becoming Warrior Wives. And um, she did this with one of her dear friends, Brittany. And it came out of a really um, unique season in both of their marriages. And so I want to hear, I want you all to hear her heart <laughs> on this because I could try to relay it to you, but it comes way better out of her beautiful mouth. So I want you to hear it straight from her and to hear just why this could be such an awesome tool for you to have in your marriage, no matter how long you've been married, if you've never, if you're just beginning to be married or you've been married for many years, and um, they were eight years into their marriage yeah. when she mm -hmm. started doing this. And um, it's just an awesome tool. And so I want to share with you just like the, what it, how they describe it. It is a listening prayer study, inviting God to radically transform your marriage through faithful prayer. And it's just super cute journal. And I would love for Steffi just to share with us um, how or what was the season like when this was birth? Like what was the season in your marriage like? Yeah, so when this initially um, began for me, I didn't have this particular tool. Um, and I actually was honestly blissfully unaware of um, kind of the the dysfunctional season that we were in yeah. and um, I kind of I was probably in a bit of denial as to what we had where we had kind of dug ourselves yeah. and it was at that moment in time when uh, a lady from our church started a Bible study and invited the young mo young wives to join and it was we were reading through um, a Christian marriage book together but yeah. As we started the study, she asked us each to get a journal and to write out prayers every day, yeah. whether it was a sentence or a paragraph or a whole page, yeah. to just start writing out prayers for our husband every day. Yeah. And then when we'd meet together, she'd have prepared questions for us to ask the Holy Spirit yeah. um, in regards to our marriage or ourselves yeah. and or our husbands. And I remember the very first question, um, so maybe we had been journaling a week, we got yeah. our journals, we came back and... Um, she asked us to ask the Holy Spirit how we had contributed to the dysfunction in our marriage. And that really woke me up to the reality that there was dysfunction and that we were actually walking in quite a bit of un unhealthy patterns. Yeah. And um, it was the first awakening to the, to, to the fact that we were not in a healthy place. Yeah. But it, um, as I began to pray and write out these prayers every day, I would say it got worse far, far sooner than it got better. Yeah. And we 
um, I just really had that to cling to because I, in that first time when we were asking the Holy Spirit questions, I remember him speaking specifically and really poignantly that um, he had allowed us to have a really healthy beginning, yeah. but that he was going to, he was going to allow it to kind of unravel yeah. so that um, he could rebuild it to be more healthy mm-hmm. and to be um, even better than what it was before, but yeah. that it was going to be broken before it was rebuilt. Yeah. Which is true of all things, right? Yeah. Like whatever. If it's so, un- if it's not functioning, yeah. you have to take it you down. Gotta start from scratch, yeah. and that can be really challenging and really hard, especially when your marriage was so good. Yes. And all of the eyes of anyone that would have saw them, they would have thought their marriage was amazing. Like you would have never known that these deep rooted things were happening mm-hmm. and stirring in both of their hearts yeah. and slowly deteriorating. Yeah. What God had initially intended for mm-hmm. them. And I think a lot of it was built on self sufficiency in the mm-hmm. beginning, mm-hmm. of a willfulness to do it well and to do it right Mm -hmm. and he was saying basically I've allowed that to work but that's not my best my best Mm -hmm. is that I sustain it and so we need to take down all of these things and all these selfish things that are underneath a lot of these things that a lot of these ways you're functioning and relating to each other they need to be stripped away yeah and um that's that's what began to happen as I began to pray and I didn't know exactly what that would look like but um I think it would suffice it to say it was really painful mm-hmm. and really uh, heart wrenching. To it was like everything we had before was gone, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what was happening or how to fix it except yeah. to pray. Yeah. So, so I, that's what you did for how long were you doing that? It was about eight months before I saw like things begin to turn around and have real breakthrough. Yeah. So we. And uh, why would you? Why do? You, why in hindsight mm-hmm. would you look back saying that it took? that long we're in when we pray we often like can it just happen now god like why is it happening why am i not seeing the fruit of my prayers yeah. and it can be really discouraging to start just praying for your for your husband yeah or for anything but specifically when you're praying for a restoration of a relationship yeah. and you're not seeing the fruit of that yes it can be so discouraging i don't know if anyone listening is in that place right now where you've been praying for your marriage or you've been praying for your relationship and it's not changing yeah. And it's really discouraging. So in hindsight, what did you feel like God was speaking during that time that yeah. you didn't know it was happening that at that didn't time? Know. Yeah. A lot of it was he had to let me sit and recognize the pain. Mm-hmm. Because um, as we were writing this, Brittany, I remember right, she wrote something really poignant. Um, and she said, you can't walk into hope and healing until you first recognize and acknowledge that you're in heartache and hopelessness. Mm, yeah. So he had to awaken my senses in a sense, um, my emotional senses to the fact that I was actually deeply hurt and he wanted, he didn't want to just fix the marriage. He wanted to heal those deep pains and hurts. And so, um, part of what we had to do is the Lord and I, is we had, I had to be really raw and vulnerable and I had to put a voice and words to what I was feeling and walking through. Um, and in that moment he right away wanted to begin to heal what was so painful and so um that was a piece of it is walking into the healing Mm -hmm. um I just it was it was it was a really intimate time with the Lord because in the ways that I didn't feel seen in my marriage um he was so affirming to me that I see you I see you I see what you're going through Mm -hmm. I see your heartache I see the effort you put in but it didn't go anywhere I see just feeling seen Mm -hmm. by the Lord Mm -hmm. made everything else not matter yeah and you didn't have any person to no. lean on during that I time. could have called you because <laughs> we had set that up that if we had crisis or something like both JJ and myself we were okay with you or Chris being right. called and vice versa um but I honestly it was such a process of um acknowledging how bad it was mm-hmm. and and being willing to say that to someone else um, yeah. That was that took a lot of courage for me because it felt yeah. so private and felt so hidden. Like you can't just expose this. Yeah. Um, and the longer it went, the harder it felt. Like it, yeah. the worse it got, and harder it felt to expose. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do remember. Um, I think the Lord's heart is for us to have community yeah. in a hard time or any time. Mm-hmm. But um, I had maybe been journaling for a few, a couple months or so, and it had felt like this is this is so bad, I don't know how we could come out of this kind of feeling. Yeah. And I happened to be at a conference and I sat next to Brittany, yeah. whom at the time I didn't actually know. Okay. I just knew of her. Yeah. And I had been feeling like I really wanted to do a prayer group yeah. with other women. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then I thought, maybe I won't feel so alone in praying for this, but they don't have to know all the details. Yeah, yeah. So this kind of, this little spark had been planted mm -hmm. to, to, to kind of gather women and do this together. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sitting next to her, I feel this whisper of, do the group with her, yeah. with Brittany. And I remember thinking, that's not God, because I don't really know her. She yeah. has to give me someone I know. Yeah. And <laughs> that could have been really helpful yeah. to have someone yeah, do yeah. it with me. But um, uh, he's still good, and he still redeemed it, because um, mm -hmm. he brought us together later, and we were able to share our stories. And yeah. um, lo and behold, she had this deep burning passion in her to gather other women and not do it alone as well. Yeah, as she yeah. had fought alone in her journal yeah. by herself. And um, the Lord had brought breakthrough for them as well. Wow. Um, but this was like a year and a half after that moment where we were sitting by each other. Yeah. So in that moment when you were sitting in that church, mm -hmm. what were the feelings that you were feeling yeah. in the season that yeah. you were in? Because there may be somebody out there that is feeling those same feelings and thinks that they're alone, that nobody else in a marriage that could be possibly be yeah. redeemed would be feeling those things. So yes. where were you at in that moment? In that moment, I think I was very defeated. Mm -hmm. um, I was praying, but just because there was nothing else I could do. Mm -hmm. Because I really, my heart wasn't that it would dissolve, that it would end mm -hmm. the marriage. Um, but it was that we would stay married, but I didn't know how we could come out of that. So it was uh, a lot of despair. Um, I was uh, carrying around quite a few just deep wounds. Um, and as, I'm, as I now know in hindsight, so was my husband. And a lot of times, uh, the way we hurt each other is from those woundings we feel ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really confused. It felt like my world had been flipped up side on its head. And I think a lot of newlyweds feel that way because yeah. they had this great dating experience mm -hmm. and then they get married and they're like, what happened? Yeah. Um, and Brittany and I had totally different experiences. Yeah. Um, so really, it's there isn't one experience that like this is for. It's really for... Um, hey, you have a good marriage and you just want to practice praying yeah. or, you know, you, you're really in the darkest season you've ever been in yeah. and you don't know which way is up mm. and you don't know if there's even hope that anything could change. Yeah. Um, I think I had kind of lost hope because it was, instead of like slowly getting better, it yeah. was just quickly getting worse. Yeah. yeah. Um, it felt like we were a downhill slide that I couldn't stop. Yeah. Um, and I was just riding it. Yeah. So, so what did what do you feel like God led you to do during that time that led you out of that deep? Season. Yeah. Um, I think first and foremost, it's encountering Jesus on a personal level. Yeah. Um, so uh, a big part of encountering Jesus is when you're faced with his perfection, you realize where you've been wrong. Yeah. So um, it was kind of like eight months oh. of a spanking. You know? <laughs> Just being, everything being revealed yes. that you may not have been aware That of. I was not aware of. Yeah. Um, and he was so tender and so slow about it. It never was actually like this awful thing, yes. but it was like, I just didn't realize yeah. how I had contributed. Yeah. Um, and so little piece by piece, just showing me where I needed to repent with him and then going to my husband as he's re revealing it to me. Hey, I want to apologize because I feel like the Lord's showing me this led to this yeah. and I did this in this yeah. way. Um, or my response was incorrect or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely repentance was big. Yeah. Um, you ha uh, I had to go into a, a humility that I didn't, um, I hadn't walked in quite yeah. as much yeah. before. Man, isn't that just the truth of marriage? Like it is the most humbling experience of your life oh, yeah. being married to another person <laughs> because you go into marriage. We talked about this the other night, like how you just feel like all of your ways are the right yeah. way because right. you've wrong. just been able to do whatever you wanted your whole life. And now you had parents and siblings, but they did what they wanted and you still got to do what you wanted to do. But then when you're married to someone, like you really have to compromise and you have to yeah. humble yourself and recognize things that we're doing that yeah. could be hurtful. And oh man, it is... I feel like everybody's like <laughs> furnace that they walk through is different. Like some people have it super intense. Like those first couple months of marriage yeah. or the first year of marriage is pretty common. Like for you to be walking through the furnace of like, I need to slough off a lot of yeah. stuff that hasn't been sloughed off. Like that yeah. I wasn't even aware it was a problem. And now yeah. this person is holding up a mirror to me and showing it to me every day and telling yeah. me all the things that I'm doing that are hurting them. And you're just like, what? I didn't mm -hmm. realize. So I feel like the Lord was patient and gentle with so you gentle to give so you patient. eight months to do that rather than like a month and just like, hi, <laughs> shop it off. <laughs> but that could be some people's experiences. Yes. I know everyone walks through different things in different yeah. times of life, but um, it's, 
uh, we he all was do. rewriting every way I had operated in our marriage. Yeah. He really was going back to the very beginning of how we began to relate that yeah. seemed good, yeah. but wasn't rooted in his strength. Mm -hmm. It was really my own strength, mm -hmm. my own scheming, and my own yeah. ways of how we can make a good marriage. And he's like, I need to be the strength. Yeah. I need to be the center. I need to be the source. So what was the vision that he gave you that you shared with me the other day about the you encountering. holding him? Oh, oh, yes. At his ankles. So when that, that first question that I had asked the Lord of how I had contributed to the dysfunction in our marriage, um, I, as he's speaking these things, I was seeing a picture of uh, like the throne and Jesus sitting on it. And then JJ was like grabbing, trying to grasp at Jesus' feet, but was just shy of it. And then I was holding onto his ankles. Mm -hmm. And what he was saying is like, you trying to scheme and plan and, um, and like, oh, we're going to do this Bible study or let's go to this church or mm -hmm. let's pray now. Like it wasn't bad things, yeah. but it was my own effort, my own ideas, my own, yeah. um, initiative, my own initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's like, um, and then it, the next question that we we're supposed to ask was like, how, um, how, how does he want you to relate instead? Okay. And the next picture I saw was me on my knees praying and, <laughs> and, um, I, uh, he was able to actually just be fully wrapped around Jesus's legs and there was no distance between him and Jesus because of any of my own schemings. And so, um, I was able to actually recognize that like the way we were going to change things was through me simply praying and releasing him to, to <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you're in a house full of people and there's just lots of interruptions. There's only 14 people there. Yeah, we've kept them away for as long as we can. Hopefully they all just start, 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 start wandering in. I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> this is our life. It's okay. Okay, continue. True story. True okay. Story. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, what he was saying is the breakthrough of 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 JJ actually really being able to encounter encounter Jesus in a personal, intimate, private way mm -hmm. is going to be when I release him through prayer yeah. and like pray him to Jesus instead yeah. of shove him to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone that does that. That's yeah. not what women do. We no. don't try to make them do anything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh man, that's such a common common thing within a marriage because so often the woman is the one that's really tender and soft-hearted towards the Lord yeah. so we are easily gravitating towards God from childhood and then even in like our 20s when we become mothers that typically will if you haven't already had a relationship with the Lord that might be when you do yeah but it's harder for men to have that softening of their hearts so oftentimes it doesn't happen at the same time as it yeah. does for the woman and it can be really hard in a marriage when you don't feel yeah. like you're in the same place and that yes. you're as close to the Lord as you want to be mm -hmm. exactly yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is your so what what ended up happening with you and Brittany that let once you were kind of walking out of all of the dysfunction and yes. recognizing all of the areas that needed to be dealt with, what um, progressed from there? Yeah. So as we began to meet um, or get to know each other as friends, we began to share more of our stories and I had never told her about the time where I had felt like the Lord said I want you to start this movement with Brittany I never told her that and um, I never told her about my desire to have other wives gather together and so when we finally um, were talking more regularly she mentioned she's like do you know it's just a fire in my heart I was like what and she said <laughs> <"Tell me." laughs> she said I just want to gather wives that we can pray for our husbands and then I want the wives to like be able to pri privately journal their prayers yeah, as well yeah. and I was like hold on that's my fire mm -hmm. like and all along this yeah. this was a year and a half after I had sat next to her and God had tried to give her to me <laughs> as a gift yes I wouldn't be alone <laughs> um and I said no thanks <laughs> um that he really um he revealed that to us and I was like no that's what the Lord's been putting on my heart yeah. so then we decided okay this is something really unique so yeah. we set up a time to talk because we were in different states at the time and we began to share like this is what I feel like the Lord's been writing into my heart and I'm yeah. like this is what 
and it was identical mm. from the smallest feature to the biggest yeah. biggest thing it yeah. was the same thing God yeah. had been writing into both of us yeah. and just building and um, stoking the fire yeah. in us and then we so August 2016 okay. we began to pray and collaborate and we'd set up times to write yeah. and um, it was just incredible to see like even our writing styles I mean as you read this you really can't distinguish who wrote what yeah. because he even thought of that our writing styles would be so similar yeah. so we um, began to put that together and we kind of we we really felt strongly that you know that the Bible says people die perish for lack of vision yeah. and we're like this has to have a vision that drives it yeah. and so we sat down we're like what did God do in us mm -hmm. And then what do we want God to do in the wives that might take this tool? Yeah. Yeah. And it's first encounter God. Mm -hmm. You need an encounter with Jesus. Yes. Um, and then the next would be to impact your marriage mm -hmm. through faithful prayers. And the third would be to influence the world yeah. as you've, once your marriage is kind of uh, yeah. held up and supported and yeah. Yeah. strong, you can now um, go ahead and reach out beyond your crisis yeah. right. and influence the world. Yeah. So that, that is so cool. And what is interesting is both her and Brittany were journaling during and through the parts of their marriage that were the toughest and yeah. the hardest. And that was a huge part of their breakthrough was mm -hmm. just sitting alone with the Lord. And yeah. so often we just want to run to people. Mm -hmm. We want to run to a church. We want to run to a book. We want to run mm -hmm. to a pastor, whatever it is. And those are good. And we should also have those in our lives. But sometimes the breakthrough comes from being alone mm -hmm. with the Lord and just encountering Him and His love. And that's what they both experienced, but what they both were missing mm -hmm. and longing for yes. was the community. Because that's what the enemy wants us to just be isolated and alone in our hurts and make us believe that we're the only one that's yes. dealing with this. Oh gosh, yes. And that I cannot speak a word of this to anyone or right. else they will think the worst things of me. And yep. it's just the enemy trying to muzzle us to yes. keep us from sharing to get to reach out for that help because we're like in the hole like and just have to throw a hand out but we won't do it because we're afraid and so mm -hmm. both of them were in that season together doing it and doing didn't it know. alone yeah. and didn't know and then once they realized like we just want everyone to be together so yeah. that they can yeah. walk through it together well and honestly that's what this is is it's a tool so that women can be together and do it together mm -hmm. but for the woman who literally is all alone and yeah. doesn't have anybody there's been different seasons with the military where we've lived yeah. I wouldn't have had another person to do it with right. but that doesn't mean that there's no hope for you or that you yeah. can't grab hold of this yeah. and do it and here's the thing is this is a tool for someone who wants a tool yeah but even if you don't need the tool and you are like an avid prayer journaler yeah that you don't need this <laughs> honestly just yeah. get a journal and start faithfully writing out prayers yeah. like but if you don't if you've never sat and prayed <laughs> this is amazing because she really like tells you exactly what to do and it's very like step by step and it walks you through it in a way that gives you words to speak because sometimes mm -hmm. before the Lord we just feel like we have nothing to say and we yeah. don't even know where to begin so she really helps to give you like an avenue like you can go this way you can go this way and she kind of gives you words to like Prayer prompts. Kind yeah, of, yeah, prompts to kind of help you through it and a ton of verses and just good like inspiration for different areas of your marriage that you might be struggling with. And so it is a phenomenal tool and it's definitely something that you can start here and then just continue the method and the model yes, yeah. that they set up. It's more of like training wheels for yes. praying yes. and prayer journaling and like yes. being before the Lord and kind of giving you a way of continuing to do that your whole marriage because no matter where we are in our marriage there's always if we don't sit before the Lord and mm -hmm. ask him to search us we're gonna come to another place where everything's gonna be stripped away so that we do that and so if we're just continuing to do that and are in a habit of just praying and seeking the Lord and asking God to look at us and not at our husbands our marriages are gonna flourish and be yeah. so much more healthy even yeah. if our husband isn't where he's supposed to be or where yes. we want him to be at least our own heart and our own mind and our own spirit yes can be where God wants us to be because that's half the battle, right? Just being yeah. where we should be. And that's something that J.J. used to always say. Is he, um, uh, he would say, I think a marriage can be good if just one person can be humble. Yeah. And I think it can be even better mm -hmm. when one person's humble and the Holy Spirit is intervening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think something that um, I feel and Brittany feels because there, we were both in just really dark seasons yeah. in our marriage when the Lord when the Lord stepped in. Yeah. And um, there's no circumstance too dark. There's no marriage too far gone. Mm -hmm. There's no betrayal um, too deep. Mm. That the Lord's love and redemption and power yeah. 
um, and miracles can't step in and intervene and redeem completely. Yeah. I mean, the prayers I prayed for, you know, it was longer than four years ago. It was six years ago. Mm. I still see the fruit of those things being um, responded to by the Lord mm. um, in, mm. in our marriage and in our relationship. Yeah. And in the moment when I was writing them, I just was hoping they were getting to God's hands, you yeah. know? Yeah. And knowing now with confidence mm -hmm. everything I prayed, everything I put in those pages landed yeah. at the feet of a God position to respond. Yeah. And, um, and at the same time, I think what I learned through the process of praying mm -hmm. was more important than the actual prayer. Yeah. I learned that perseverance mm -hmm. is the key yeah. and that sometimes God wants to take us on the journey of seek and per like us seeking and pursuing him. Yeah. Um, the Bible says that it will, you, um, Seek me, and you will find me when yes. you seek me with all of your heart. Mm -hmm. And when the and then um, uh, the other verse where it says to knock, knock mm -hmm. uh, seek, and you will find. Mm -hmm. Knock, and the door will be open to you. And sorry, it's ask, and you will yeah. <laughs> ask, and you will receive. Seek, mm -hmm. and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Yeah. Um, it's not a one knock, and then yeah. well, he didn't answer. Yeah. It's not a ask once and then go away. Yeah. Um, it's and it's not like I looked and he's not here. Yeah. It's seeking and pursuing and knock 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 until he answers and ask and ask and ask and ask and ask until he answers because sometimes he's about being pursued he wants the pursuit of the prayer and if he just gave it to us we'd be done mm-hmm that's true yeah so that's so good and that's such that's just a beautiful picture of the love of God that he is so willing to answer the prayers and that he hears every prayer because he heard all of the prayers that she had written down and they have been answered tenfold like you yes. would not believe their marriage now in the season that they were in like if you were to look in just yes. how they're operating you would have never thought that they had the beautiful marriage that they have today like or that they could like yes. it just would have seemed like there's no way like yes. that would change to this and God's redemption is just so powerful and yeah. he's so good and I'm just so proud of you for sharing <laughs> all of your things because I know that's really vulnerable and hard to talk about things that are so intimate to your heart and I just am so thankful that you shared that with me and with whoever else is watching and um, we just wanted to take a moment and pray with you. Um, I would like for you to pray for I all of them <laughs> and then I will see you soon. We are getting some crazy light happening in here. <laughs> like our, our setting is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is shining down. <laughs> Okay, so we'll let Stephanie lead us out. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, I just lift up each and every woman who might stumble upon this video. I just ask, Lord, that you would be real for them, that your presence would be tangibly felt by them, that your love would um, envelop them and cover them, that despite what tenderness or love is coming to them from their husbands, Lord, that they would feel the immeasurable um, love um, and the constant presence of your Holy Spirit with them mm -hmm. that is far greater than any love or presence from a husband that they would feel seen and known and loved um, and I pray specifically for the woman who feels hopeless and desperate um, that she feels like the time the time is ticking and it's just gonna end or it's just there's no hope for it to change, Lord. I pray that you'd speak something powerfully into her heart right now, Jesus. Um, release hope over her in Jesus' name. And um, I just ask that um, just for each woman that's listening, that they would know their value and their worth and how precious they are to you, Jesus. Yes. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I am so happy that I can have tea with you. This is literally how we would just sit and talk. And so I'm so glad that you guys get to get a piece of little stuff because she's such a gem. And um, if you would like to get one of these books, I'm going to add her information or a way for you to contact her, email her, and she will mail them to you because it's just her and Brittany that like produce them. So they're not like in stores or anything. It's literally just like a work of their hearts that they just want other women to not be alone in whatever you're walking through that you would have people to come alongside or that you'd have a tool to just help you go before God's throne and to just me mm -hmm. seek and to knock and to pray and to ask him for the things that you're desiring for your marriage um, and so I would love for you to get one of these and if you live locally and you want to do one of these let me know and we can start a group because the heart behind it is that you would come together with other women mm -hmm. and just pray and yeah. so one of their like things is when they got, a lot of times when women get together, we want to talk and we want to tell you all of the things that are going wrong in our lives. 
as an attempt of like, this is my prayer request. I'm just going to tell you all these things. <laughs> and then we take little time to pray, but we talk about all the issues yes. for much longer. And so I love that in their groups, they don't want you to come and talk. They want you just to show up and, and start praying. And so through praying, you just tell very little details. You don't have to give people just like Steffi didn't share her whole life story with her husband because that wouldn't be honoring to her husband. Yeah. It's really important that you aren't just sharing your whole burdens and your deep pain that you have within a marriage with every person that you know or it, lots of people because that can be really detrimental yeah. to your relationship and so I we both really encourage you to find a couple or a couple of friends that you really trust and that your husband trusts yeah. you talking to because it could be that this is my best friend but my husband doesn't want me telling her stuff that's happening in yeah. our life and so it really needs to be both of you agree that this is a safe person you can tell them vent to them give them all of our junk and know that that person is gonna put the mirror to your face to mm -hmm. make you look at your own self and not only be bashing our husbands when we yeah. get together and so this is what I love about this group is that you come together with other women and you just lift up and encourage and the Holy Spirit gives you the things that you need to pray for them you don't have to know all the details as soon as she starts sharing your heart you could just pray over her with whatever you feel like the Holy Spirit's leading you to pray and um, they have experienced such yeah. growth and healing in these groups because you don't feel alone and you know that there's all of us are struggling in some capacity so to just be lifted up by our sisters in Christ is such a beautiful yeah. thing and the vision for that comes from Matthew, I think, 18, and it says um, that when you agree in prayer, that he will do whatever you have asked. Yeah. So we need people with us yeah. to grab hands and agree with yeah. us in prayer yeah. um, for the breakthrough, yeah. and that makes all the difference. Yeah. I can't even tell you how quick breakthrough comes when I'm doing one of these groups and praying versus when I'm privately writing out my prayers. Not that he doesn't yeah. hear them, but he's like, you know, gather together. There's some motivation to get yes. together with other people. Yeah. So, for sure. Okay, well, we hope you're having a great day, and I will chat with you soon. Bye-bye.